I have this little amp antenna. It's a Nagoya NL770S. This will fit in the uh, end of the antenna and convert it to an SMA connector. I have this 200 millimeter square by two and a half millimeter aluminum plate. And I have a three quarter inch, that's a nominal diameter EMT, which is thin wall electrical conduit, electrical metallic tubing. And it's a compression connector as opposed to a set screw connector. And the compression connector has this little collapsible ring in it here that tightens against this slightly tapered surface and securely clamping the conduit around its circumference when you tighten this up. This is designed to be passed through a hole in an electrical box secured on the inside with this nut. This is a two scale drawing of the uh, 200 millimeter plate. The SO connector in the middle. This connector out here, a little bit offset from the center of the uh, plate and eight 36 inch long radials mounted to the plate except one of them is shortened by an inch and a half to allow for this to intrude into the space and they're going to be clamped I think like this we're going to take a four millimeter washer and I've got some with a 12 millimeter OD. I think if I put them in the vise and just bend, picture this as a washer, bend over this portion right here, that I can fit an eighth inch rod underneath this clamp. Four millimeter bolt secured with a stainless steel nylon locker. So that should provide me with a mounting plate for the antenna, a mounting plate for the EMT conduit coming up underneath. It won't pass through the plate. So I need to drill 16 holes for the 4 millimeter bolts, get 16 bent washers and 16 nuts. Cut a hole big enough to accept this. Small hole here. Big enough to accept this plate. And then a, this diameter hole here. And I'll mount it down like this. With four flathead stainless steel screws. So that's how I'm going to proceed to mount this antenna. Both the antenna on the plate and then the plate on a piece of EMT conduit. I've got my template fastened to the aluminum plate and I'm going to center punch all of the holes that need to be drilled. Now if you watch my mail video, you've seen that I bought a couple of these for like five bucks from AliExpress. All you do is put it on the cross here and press down on it. It leaves a dent. You need to move it, just aim in the direction you want to move it and it will move the hole slightly, the dent, the uh, center punch. 
once all of these are done, I'll drill them with a very small drill. It's easier to get a small drill to self-center than it is a big drill. I'm going to be using a drill press. If you have a good center punch mark there, you'll feel that, and you slide the plate around a little bit, you'll feel the drill bit find the hole, find the center punch mark. If you try to drill this with a full size drill, especially something like this, it, it's going to walk. So we always want to step drill these a little hole a bigger hole and then a final hole except maybe for these M3s but I'll drill out center punch and center drill everything I drilled all the holes except this one needs to be enlarged to accept the three quarter inch uh, uh, conduit connector Here's the antenna, and this is not an aluminum radial. Uh, it's a, actually a quarter-inch transfer punch, but or an eighth-inch transfer punch. But here you can see what I meant by bent washers, maybe. See that? And the rod is captive under the bent washers. There we go. The fastener combination looks like that. So you've got that bent edge there. Just a little bit. And then there's a nylon locking nut here. Now I wish I had made these screws about three millimeters longer. So that's what it looks like. I'm going to take this back apart and put sealant all around this. I may get the top of an aerosol can, uh, like a can of spray paint or brake cleaner, and put it up here. That is, assuming I can get one that clears this bolt circle. And that will form a, a drip shield with this uh, SMA connector. Here's the antenna laying on my deck. My deck is about nine or 10 feet off the off ground level. I used to be able to bring coax into the house and I had a desk on the other side of that two inch conduit going through the house wall. Now I have to uh, run considerably greater distance. So we've got eight radials each three feet long. That's a 200 centimeter square plate and the antenna of course sticking out the top of the plate. Here's the antenna finally mounted on its mast. Now it's the mast will move up another five feet. I have it down this low so I can perhaps bend the radials uh, downward at a drooping angle. Here's the VNA hooked to some coax that I intend to use to feed the antenna. This is a termination resistor, 50 ohms, at the end of the coax. Looking at the Smith chart, you'll see we're right at 50 ohms with the uh, 50 ohm attenuator at the end of the roll of coax. I've got this span set from 135 to 460 megahertz. See up here the frequency 
at the uh, cursors at. And you'll see that it's sitting at 50 ohms clear through the span of VNA. A little bit of wobbling there at the very end. See that wobbling? Just a little. Here we are uh, back in the shop. And I've got this uh, VNA looking at SWR. Right now, the marker is at 440.5 and you see the SWR is 1.42 and at the bottom here is 434 megahertz 1.06 then we travel we have a low point here at 356 megahertz uh, SWR 3.6 Here we are at 141 megahertz, 1 1.7, 1.5, 1.5, try to go to 140, 4 megahertz, 144, SWR, 1.8. So those are the two points we wanted to hit. Here's our Smith chart. Doesn't look too good. 50 ohms is right here. So this is 144. And there's 440. See, we're almost perfect at 434 right there. But the two meter band, we're hanging right around there. So that's our dual band double antenna.